so many times in the Gospels. We are told by the angels and by Jesus himself that we mustn't allow our hearts to be troubled. Do not fear. The angels repeatedly declare to the shepherds, to those who they bring messages. And Jesus himself says, do not let your heart be troubled. But in a world where so many have a growing fear, an uncertainty, a concern for the future, in which wars and social unrest seem to threaten to leave very few places where, where peace may be found, true peace. We must ask ourselves, how can our hearts find such peace, find such peace and not be troubled by all that we see around us, all that we see and hear that's going on in our world. First, let us see that our Lord also suffered a, a troubled heart. Jesus carried so much on behalf of all of us. He cried to his Father in Gethsemane on the night before his great suffering. So there is nothing sinful, nothing wrong in being troubled in this way. Even the perfect God and man Jesus knew this pain. He experienced this very pain that we encounter, this troubled heart. So let us first acknowledge to ourselves that much of the trouble in our hearts is not because we, we endure things out of love for other people but because very often we, we worry unnecessarily about worldly things. We become consumed with transient, unimportant nonsense that often just distracts us from our true purpose in life. Let us be honest with ourselves. Let us watch. Let us watch and see what moves our hearts, see how attached we are to things that are are really so trivial. But whether we're troubled by noble concerns for others or because of our weakness and, and our selfishness, the remedy is exactly the same. The remedy is the same whether our hearts are nobly filled with love and concern for others and troubled for them or filled with, with pettiness and concern for the transient things of the world. The remedy is the same. The remedy is always the same for any troubled heart, whatever its cause. Our spirit will only ever be at peace when we live in faith and trust in God and we fix our vision, our, our focus not on anything in this world. We must lift our eyes, raise our vision, raise our focus from the things of this world to the things of the next world, on the world to come. And we must understand, we must, we must believe that our true home is not in this world. Recognize that this is not our home. Our true home is in the world to come. That, that we truly are aliens, visitors to this place, passing through so quickly. The brevity of our lives is shocking. There is no permanent place of rest for us here in this world. And there never can be. And when we try to build that kind of place of rest in this world, founded on the things of this world, then we are entering into deception. We deceive ourselves and we allow the demons to deceive us. We must, we must know and we must trust and believe that Jesus, as he said he would, has prepared a place, a place where he will receive those who enter his kingdom. I go before you to prepare a place, he says. In order to find peace, 
we must look to a place that has no pain, that has no tears, that has no fear. There is no anxiety in this place to come. But we must remember that, that such a condition cannot and never will be known in this earth. It can never be found in this life, in this world. And any social organization attempting to create any kind of utopia will always result in suffering. Because we will understand if we look and understand the nature of this world and the nature of the world to come that the suffering is part of this fallen nature, a fallen world that is reaping the, the fruit of our sin. But our hearts can also find comfort to a degree in this life. Yes, there is a degree of peace in trusting and believing in that world to come and we must hold on to it. But our hearts can also find a degree of peace in this life, knowing that in that world to come, it won't only be an absence of suffering that we have to look forward to, but a joy beyond imagination, because our Lord himself will be there. Jesus Christ will be there in that kingdom. It will be a life eternally lived in his presence. And the sweet, the sweet effect of this, of this hope, is made only sweeter by drawing close to him now in this life. Troubled hearts are permitted to cry out to him and find relief in him in this life. He came not only to, to show the way to the Father, but to, to be the way, the only way, for he is the way, the truth, and the life. The greater we struggle to follow his, his commands, struggle to repent, struggle to forgive, struggle to love, the deeper we are permitted to enter his presence the deeper we draw closer to him. And the deeper we draw closer to Christ, the more we experience his love and his comfort when our hearts are burdened, when our hearts are troubled by the things of this world and by our own failure to trust in him. Christ hasn't abandoned us. He assures us that he will be with us even to the very end of the age. Christ has not abandoned us and he continues to offer himself. Offers himself to every living soul. Every one of us, Christ now offers himself to us, seeking us to draw us to his kingdom, draw us into his everlasting eternal life. Calling us back from the the misery and the deception of this world. Where, of course, our hearts will not just be comforted, and we are to be comforted in our trials now in this life by his presence. But the deeper we enter into the presence of Christ, the more we are filled with his presence, and the more we are illuminated by his light.